This Sunday. This Sunday. 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 Side by side at the microphone from the green light to the speed trap. Chris Switzer and Ray Garino calls them as they see them, and you better believe them. Here, relevant news, biased opinions, and outright bullshit regarding every aspect of automotive culture. Gas, but mechanical trickery never before revealed over FCC regulated airwaves. Thrill to the explosive tension as Chris and Ray cuss each other down the track and barrel roll across the finish line, laughing at certain disaster as they shake hands with the devil. All that and much more this Sunday at high noon on the Motormouth Radio Hour. Call in and speak live with the Wizards of Speed and Live Feed, Chris Witzer and Ray Garino. Bring the whole family. Kids under 12 get in free. Every Sunday at noon on WHPC, take the Long Island Expressway to the Meadowbrook Parkway and look for the sign saying no parking on the expressway and no express service on the parkway. Go ride on Highway 24 to Garden City. $2 all-day parking includes pit pass. Baby, is that your baby? Baby face, you've got the cutest little baby face. There's not another one could take your place. Hey, baby face, baby face. Let me tell you something. Heart is jumping. You know, pick you music sure for the show every week. I thought I was playing Pink face. Floyd. I guess my music <laughs> library is is not alphabetized correctly. I didn't need a <laughs> How did I end up I with fell in love your with uncle? Your pretty, pretty baby uncle Floyd. Face. How'd that happen? <laughs> You've tuned in to Motor Mouth Radio, Long Island's only automotive and uh, and, and alternately based uh, automotive talk show. As you can see by our music selections, we kind of go everywhere. I figured it. What a way to start the new year, Chris. Right, with some leisure suit entertainment. <laughs> you know. No, it's just, it's far I was like, that's Uncle Floyd. <laughs> that's Uncle Floyd. And uh, <laughs> exactly. So, uh, yeah, so I figured we'd start the year with some uh, something a little alternative, something a little different. Yes. Why not? That's that's kind of the what this show is. So let's, let's just propagate it and keep going. Um, and there you Mark's, go. Uh, 22 years, right? That this 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 was our anniversary, right? We just had an anniversary this week. Of uh, I figured you give a little synopsis on how that started because uh, it's, it's <laughs> quite quite a story. Tired of hearing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's quite a story. So yeah, you should you should uh, you should uh, tell us. I was very young when I was born. <laughs> right. Oh, <it's, laughs> well, you know, I I had a a. a mediocre radio career growing up and uh, decided to move into television. And when I did that, I ran into a certain individual named Rob Leonard. I blame him for this. That's man. I blame him. But anyway, (laughs) uh, but yeah, it was Rob that, that he asked, he pushed me. He said, he says, put a proposal together and do a, do a car show. He says, everybody talks to you about, about your, their cars here at the job because we work together. Uh, in television, and and uh, he said, everybody talks to you about uh, about your car, and you're a radio guy at heart. So put a put a proposal together. And I went, no, right, no one wants to hear about this. <laughs> so he forced me, like he does, like he did did most of the time. That was that's his technique, pretty much strong arming. And I uh, put a proposal together, and he submitted it to our, our own uh, ex. Uh, PD, the illustrious Jim Green, and and uh, lo and behold, my uh, 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 the appointment to come and see him here at the, here at the college was on September eleventh, two thousand and one. Right, which to me is still incredibly fascinating. I'm I'm driving to the school, and buildings are going down around us, which should have said something karmically. What I was doing was not a good idea. Yeah, probably something that you want to look into, right? Right, exactly. I'm sure psychiatrists all across the country are probably nationwide are probably going to be like, this This needs to be studied. Yes. Well, anyway, so I had gotten into the station, and, and uh, Jim Green said, uh, you start in, you start the first week in January. Now get out of here because we're evacuating the building. Right. Which which was which had to be the most efficient interview I ever had. You know, I, don't you, think I said two words. Yeah, and probably good thing you didn't because then after that he would have uh, so. would have threw he would have thrown me out of my can. Listen, I'll tell you something. 
the 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 we're, we're getting some um, answers to Uncle Floyd already. You know, uh, uh, <laughs> Christian sending in requests. He's sending an Uncle Floyd request. I was like, oh. You know, I got I got two CDs. I got a lot of stuff here because Chris, you and I saw Uncle Floyd live. I I don't think I ever laughed so much. And talk about strong arming. You would say you can't break I, my shoes. Oh yeah, come on, let's go see Uncle Floyd. And I'm like, no, I don't want to see him. Come on, oh, let's go see Uncle Floyd. It was the greatest show I think we've ever seen. It was phenomenal. It was at. Uh, uh, da, 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 the comedy was it governors? The, no, it was the comedy house in Belmore, the brokerage. So it was a small, intimate club, and we sat there at a little table, and Uncle Floyd sat there with his piano and Oogie, and he just played away and did his thing for like a, a couple hours, you yes. know? And then we I, met him outside in the lobby and bought CDs and had a great old time and said, oh, oh was so cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't even know where those CDs are. <laughs> They're floating well, around someplace. Well, we bought two, original, uh, two of his original CDs. Yes. And then what happened is I took the originals and I copied them both and gave you one original and a copy of the other. And I have the other original and a copy of the, of the other. So that way it was fair. We each have an original and a copy. Thank you. And he autographed <laughs> them. He actually signed he them did. to us. Yeah, to Kristen Ray of Motormouth Radio. You know, Uncle Floyd, it's, it is autographed. It is certainly autographed. I actually have them in a stack of Motormouth Radio CDs. Remember when we used to burn CDs every week of this fine, upstanding program? And I think it's in those stacks. Remember somewhere. when we used to? Remember when the show used to be recorded on cassette tape? On cassette. That was the. That, that was the whole reason why we took a bottom of the hour break. Only because the eight track player broke. <laughs> I couldn't get the wire recorder to. to Pull up. It just wasn't, yeah, wasn't yeah, the working. Edison machine was uh, was on the fritz. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so listen, Not, nothing yeah. like an Edison cylinder to, to uh, show off those quality tones. Yeah. So that being the case, January third was that actually that the uh, anniversary, and we used to come in and we'd have cakes, and we've had listeners come in and bring cakes and cookies, and we've had all sorts of great stuff when we were both in the studio. Right. So. I, I this time of year, this show, the first one, we always go through a quick recap of what happened, memorable moments from the year before for this show. Right. The list has gotten a little shorter. Some years it was really short, but um, back in January, January eighth, it was almost a year ago today. Right. Right. We had our first live broadcast to the YouTube channel when Mark Warman was on with us. Now, oh wow. Now, we haven't had Mark on since then, and since then, we haven't been able to do a live YouTube broadcast either. That kind of stopped. Now, we have to manually upload to YouTube. Um, right. So, it has something to do with Mark. Well, here's one for you. March 19th, the, the new promo debuted. That's right. I was thinking about that. I said, so, out of all the many things I need to do, I should now, put together a new promo. What was the interval for those in the past that they were new? It, it was be three a, months. Every three months. And that's many it'll be a year in March. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll <play> same <laughs> old one. Well, another good thing happened in March that actually had everybody else but me jealous as hell. Because on the twenty sixth, we were doing our fundraising thing. And right. Tom from Massapico came in with the Sicilian pizza for the fundraiser. Yes. And I ate it on air and everybody was jealous. And you as were you should annoyed. Be. I still am. <laughs> and then we go to July. Uh, in July tw- 23rd, you used the free tech call text service for the first time. What is that number so Brian can text you? Yes. The uh, Hey Matt Command Brian uh, toll free text number. Oh, by the way, I'd like to thank Brian for we're gonna get in for me. We'll get to that. Uh, yeah. Yes. I wanted to thank him for that because he did a masterful job. But the number is 203 6 Seven zero four one two seven six seven zero four one two seven, and remember that ultra important area code, right? Two hundred three. So write it down. Yes. Uh, uh, I think uh, Vince has it wrong. Um, Alan Sherman did "Hello Mother, Hello Father," right? Yes, you're yes. correct. So Vince, you're wrong. Yes. That was Uncle Floyd. That's um, Uncle Floyd. May, maybe he ca- covered it. I don't know, but that's an Alan Sherman song, uh, right? Okay, just so we know. Okay, so let's see. Back in August, this was a big one for me, at least. Mm-hmm. On the sixth, you actually came in and made a visit to the air studio. You were live. We were live together again for the first time That's in right. probably five years. Yeah, what, five for six years. What? Five years? About yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you look at the you know at the period where you you stepped away. Then Joe and I did the show for a number of years, and then. Right. When we came back, you came back. Uh, you you came back in. We were remote like this. We weren't uh, in the same place. That's right. So it's the first and time yeah. we were in the studio for like six years. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah because I've done the show in place of you. I've had to drive in before right. the, the show got incredibly 
technological. Right. right. And it was just a matter of just running a board and walking away at the end of the hour. So now back to Brian. And again, we thank Brian a lot. Brian uh, uh, filled in for you last week as a co host. Yes. September 10th, Macroman Brian, he sat in as a host. And I had to go to Studio 3 because in the beginning of the show, we lost all power. Everything. That was the whole studio. Everything went dead. And we had to do a. Uh, we only had like 20 minutes of content from an hour show. So. It, yes, it was a complete dumpster fire if yeah. you ask me yes yeah and then again brian has set history because he co- he co-hosted four times last year no one has wow. ever done that ever maybe once once someone co-hosted but because again on september 17th i did the malba show and brian co-hosted with you right and then september 24th he co-hosted with me because you were out you were down in Florida on the 24th, right. so that was, uh, and then and then again, we go to last week, December 31st, Brian co-hosted again for the fourth time while you were away. So. And, and it's kind of funny, because while the show was going on, on December 31st, I was probably within shouting distance of Brian's home, where he was broadcasting from, because I was at the Chesapeake house listening to you guys. Right. <laughs> I was on the highway. Right. And I would have, I would have loved it. To have known where he was originating from, knock on his door. Right. Well, hey. <laughs> as Brian laid out on the plane and traffic show Thursday night, he uh, sequestered himself in his basement, locked the vault, told everybody that <laughs> keep the dogs upstairs, everybody be quiet. He's got important work to do. I don't know what he was doing. He was just doing the show. <laughs> yeah. It certainly wasn't talking to you. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, that's that's so funny because. When, when I come down to do the show here every week, my family runs away. <laughs> That's nice. They're, they're like, what are you doing, doing a show? See you in an hour. Yeah, yeah. This, this place could be on fire. <laughs> right. The lights could be flickering. It could be a flood going by. They're, leave them alone. Right. <laughs> they're not gonna, won't even bother coming to call for me or looking for me for anything. No. It's like he's doing the show. <laughs> The other funny thing is uh, with with Brian, which is great. You know, of course, this show goes up as a video on YouTube on Motormouth Video, and I I suggest and I, I ask people to go check it out, subscribe to the channel, and, and help us out and whatever. Uh, it'll go up later on today. Uh, last week's show when Brian was on with me, midweek that the hits on that show surpassed the week before with you and I. <laughs> so. Ah. We put it, and he did. He still beat us by one. Put a co-host in, it. and they do better than us. So, <laughs> I love it. I know. <laughs> when Christian was on a couple of uh, a month or so ago, the same thing. We had like many more. You know, I think we got to hang out with their friends. I don't know. They seem to have more influential friends than we do. I guess I don't know. No one should. No one wants to talk to us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> they're tired of looking at us. Speaking of that, speaking of Christian, yeah. I want to say something, and I don't know if it'll af- it'll affect his um, if if I'll make him you know make him reddened or if I'll uh, you know embarrass him. I shouldn't. Uh, there's a, he uh, he has a display at the Hopog Library of you know we've spoke in the past about uh, Geiger counters and exometers and all sorts of crazy stuff. Well, he has a, a big collection of stuff, and I actually gave him some some radioactive samples that I had had. And he, his display is at the library on Vets Highway for about at least for this month. So, and it's pretty extensive. It's uh, a, a, ah. so if you want, I'm going to go check it out. And I, uh, you know, if, if we have call if listeners who are out in Suffolk, they want to check that out too. Uh, it's at the Hot Pog Library. I don't know where. We'll find out. Just look for the, look. They ask them to shut the lights out. Look for the display that's glowing. I just saw, a, yeah, I just saw a text on our text line at 203-670-4127 saying Christian is radioactive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just saw it go by. Really? <laughs> nice. Yeah. So that's cool. Um, but that's fascinating. You know, it's, that's what I, that's what I truly respect about him. He knows a lot of stuff in my yeah in my mind christian and um a varied amount of of knowledge yeah um yeah uh, uh tyler uh, over in ohio uh right. you know those two guys the two of those guys together could would be dangerous because they know so sure. much about so many different things and they can describe it and and eloquently you know convey it uh, those two guys together are like 
would be dangerous if they. Uh, I'm sure. Now I have the power to introduce them, and I don't know if it's in the world's <laughs> best interest to do it or not. I really don't. I, I, you know, I'm not sure. I might be, you know, maybe like crossing the fourth wall here if I did that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's it. There's there's a lot to be said for individuals that truly have a knowledge of knowledge. Right. They they just know like a little bit or a lot about everything. And right. and I, I, I tip my hat to those people. It's, it really is. It's a, uh, it's a gift. It's an obsession. I, I think it, it, I truly think it's, it's a passion and obsession. That's, that's kind of directed in the correct way. Right. But, but yeah, I, I think that's, that's, uh, that's very cool to, to know that people like that listen to us, critique us, <laughs> like the show and actually uh come back the next week to listen again is is a testament to our program i would think or yeah. the lack of it thereof <laughs> oh absolutely absolutely but it's good to know that there are people that that are out there that still are out there that are thinkers great thinkers right. well, still out well there. speaking of out there let's uh, go to the phones and say hey call your the motor mouths so everything i learned is from watching uncle Flo kid there's, there we go. It's Christian <laughs> ah, from, from watching Uncle Floyd. There you go. When, when it came to cooking shows, me. it was Julia's stepchild. Yeah. <laughs> Christian, tell me what what would you remember your the first thought in your mind when you watched Uncle Floyd for the first time? Black and white. Black and white. UHF. You watched, uh, black and white TV. No, no. What was your first thought when you when you thought. saw him? What was no, your thought I'll, about the whole process? The, uh, I was only let's see, seventy nine, nineteen seventy nine. Okay. Uh, going into nineteen eighty, so probably I was in fourth grade. I lived in Amityville. Right. I had met a kid in the neighborhood who liked to watch Speed Racer. Yeah. And he would draw like the like all the Speed Racer stuff on his notebook or whatever. And I kind of was, yeah, that was really cool, all this stuff. So he told me, he's like, oh, you got to go on channel uh, 62, UHF. 68. Now, this is back when you used to dial in on UHF and yeah. dial in and get right. the tinfoil out, get the antennas going. And I ran home, and I, you know, I, got, I got Speed Racer up after I got my tinfoil just right on my antenna and all that stuff. Dialed in the <laughs> fine tune on there, you know, got all the pack out as much as I could. And I, I watched Speed Racer. Well, the show that was on after Speed Racer was not on Uncle Floyd. Yeah, right. And I continued to just, you know, watch it and be like, what in the heck? Yeah. And, but I kind of understood, okay, this is like public access TV, bunch of guys in a basement filming a show, obviously, you know. Right. But I was still a little too young to really realize that, obviously, because it had puppets and it had drawings and it had just all this yeah. laughter. And you had yeah. Looney Skip Rooney and you had... Neto and Scott and all these guys involved and but as I watched it I realized that he had people on that were celebrities which a lot yeah, of sure. people don't know right 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 like mm -hmm. Tiny Tim David right. Bowie big fan uh -huh. by the way okay the Ramones wow yep who else how about the Bon Ramones? Jovi's first oh, appearance no, on really? television really could have yeah. been wow Wow. Bunch of dudes in a basement in Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Is it just in the basement in Jersey? The best, the skits, Cow, Cowboy Charlie, uh, uh, yeah. Don Goomba, uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> Julius Jeptile, of course, because you can find that on YouTube. And I tell you, Christian, you know, when we saw him live, it was literally the TV show in front of us in at, yeah. at, at the brokerage. You know, yeah, but he's yeah. a super talented guy. He is. He is. And to he's see him off talent. the set of the TV, like in a comedy, the cursing and the ethnic <laughs> yeah. jokes yeah. Oh, to yeah. die for. Uh, yes. Like yes. the Polish he's, baby, he, and oh. the man, you know, the Italian baby, the Jewish baby, like he does yeah. all the hand gestures and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You he's, can't, you know. He's every uncle so I'm related like, to. <laughs> well, so I'm glad that my choice to start the new year at least tickled someone's fancy. <laughs> Out of all people, right? Yeah, <laughs> well, oh, I'm a I was uh, always a huge fan at the same time, Christian. I used to love yeah. that it was the first time I ever heard anyone, like a studio member, talking off mic. Mm. Like he would talk right. to the studio and they would talk back to him, but they weren't on mic. 
Uh, so you, you heard well, it no, off mic, and it just sounded like I never heard that on television. It's like breaking television. the fourth wall. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the yeah. Television was, was like great. such a oh. polished thing. So yeah, it's like the Monty Python of the East Coast. Really right. Like yes, that. the whole group. Perfect. You, you right. knew it wasn't it, Chuck McCann. You know, you no. were watching. Uh, you know, and it was like one take Charlie too. They just they just right. that was it. They just right. winged it, man. Right. But you know the That's Hugo doll. Remember they had a, they had, I don't know if it was Scott or Neto. They used to put the Hugo doll on the stick and make it dance around while I was playing the piano. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Completely I have, simple. I, I have two of those Hugo dolls. Oh, which is the Mattel. You know the Mattel. If if uh, uh, people out there, it's the Man of a Thousand Faces. Hugo, right? Mondo, the man. That was the original. The doll was taken off the market because it was so creepy. Of course, I had two of them. Yeah. Of course, I brought mine to the Uncle Floyd show. Then I got to perform with it on stage with him, and then get it autographed afterwards. Nice. So I have his autograph. Dude, <laughs> that's <laughs> nice. nice. These are my achievements, That's, you know. You know, I got to tell you, just to wrap this up, Christian. I'm impressed. <laughs> to, to wrap this up, you know, something ha else happened this week, Chris, that, that, that falls in with this. I sent Christian a link to a, a video on YouTube about oh, a, yeah. all uh, right, about a racer that, that was a little less than, than honest back in the day. And he said, I just watched that. And I said, I, look, yeah. I, I replied to him. I said, what, you're surprised? Look, we, we follow the same stuff. We like the same stuff. It's like we're in the same that those same circles. So yeah. it's, and, 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 and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we're anything special. I'm just saying that that's how, you know, you're with the right people, you know, because well, you're, <laughs> me and Ray's algorithms crash into each other and said, Hey, you put chocolate in my peanut butter. The hey, Ven you put peanut butter in my that's, chocolate. Right. The Venn diagrams are always crossing. Yes. <laughs> but which is R.L. Cool. Payton, right? R.L. Payton. Yeah. Did you, did you know, in that video, they also mentioned the funny car driver that, it is the guy that was in the mob. Oh, he Freddie Denome. Yes, Denome. Yes, I wrote a big piece. Denome or Denome? Yeah. Well, both. He he was illiterate, couldn't spell his own name. Oh. No. So he spelt it Denome, but it was Denome. Well, you know, I, I was just talking <laughs> to our friends Rick and Cliff about this a couple of weeks ago, and I wrote, when I was wor doing doing blog pieces for Scotty Gosson, the guy who does our intro song, uh, this is going yeah. back a number of years, he asked me, he would just call me and say, hey, kid, I need, a, I, need a, I need a blog. I need something for the blog for this week. Give me something. So I'm like, oh, my God. And, you know, talk about being under pressure. It was like, yeah, you know, I used to call myself, you know, it was like the Jimmy Olsen to his, you know, Perry White, you know. And uh, I, I, I just looked at what was going on, and it was actually the Cannoli Fest in Brooklyn that particular weekend. So I said, good, I'm going to, okay, I'm starting with the Cannoli Fest. There and I, I did some research on the bakery. It was, of course, it was in Bensonhurst. And and then Bensonhurst, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Bensonhurst, Canarsie, who? I worked Freddie the name or the gnome into it, however you want to call it. And I, uh, it was a pretty long piece. It went over very well. It got a lot, of, a lot of hits. And I sent it over to these guys who were both in that area at the time. And they knew the stuff. Like, wow, that was, you know, a pretty interesting piece. It's... I can, I could put a link to it up, I guess, because I did look that blog that blog pe space space is still up. So maybe really? I'll link that to the uh, the Dorkomotive Dorkomotive podcast. I'll send you a link because he did a full podcast about the okay. gnome, and also he has podcasts about uh, the the Green Monster. That guy uh, Al Alphonse. Oh, Al Alphonse, um, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then there's another one. He's got two. I think a two part series about the Turbonique. Uh, turbo axle guy and all his shenanigans. Okay. Um, which is the rocket, right? And then, and then Jack McClure, which is the one that did the rocket go kart. Right, right. Yeah, a lot of crazy stuff. stuff. And and recently, I talked with Skip about because Skip was there actually at the Watkins Glen incident when they go, the Formula One race where all the people went nuts and they were fl they set the bus on fire. And oh everything. Yeah, yeah. Remember that story? I remember hearing about that. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't yeah, there. Dorkomotive. I don't know what happened to that guy, but okay. that was a great. He has a great bunch of shows to listen to, and, cool. and the one, of course, yeah, he probably has an R.L. Payton too. I have to go back and check on that. Right. You know, all but right. that's in what the. That was the slingshot era, because supposedly yeah. R.L. Payton was one of the first guys to have a blown Chrysler. He did, yes. It's, they said that in that in that uh, the video that he was one of the first guys to have a 426. Yeah, the, the, and the, beat the Hemi. Don Garlitz. And he did beat Don Garlitz, yes. Correct. Yeah. Wild. Yeah, huh. cool stuff. Wow. All right, Christian, yeah. well, thanks for the trip down memory lane, brother. <laughs> yeah, Uncle Floyd, man. Come on, Cowboy. <laughs> Deep in the heart of Jersey. You got to play that. <laughs> That's, yeah. Deep in the heart of Jersey.
Yeah, I, I right? wonder if it's on here. It speaks true. Uh, yeah, it's got to be. Let's see. You know, I'm just. I, I can't look at the CD that's in the machine, but the one that's out. Let's see. I got here. Oogie, Mr. Grouch, Oogie, and somebody. Uh, Oogie and Bon Jovi, Cowboy Charlie, Clone, Cowboy Charlie, yeah. Colonel Corn, UB Small <laughs> Lips, Tom Carvel. Oh, UB Small Lips. Oh yep. my. Eddie Slobo, <laughs> Ken Doe, Don Goomba, right? Julia Don Stepchild. Goomba, yeah. Yeah, Jimmy Durante, Senior La Bu- Oh, yeah, Senior La Basura, <laughs> and Oogie. Yeah, you know what? We could do a whole show on this, but we... Uh, oh, so you could. totally could. I'm almost sorry you know I brought it we up We need to now. get him on. <laughs> if he's still around, right? Yeah. Talk to oh, Rob I'm Leonard. Sure he Maybe is. he can come on with Rob Leonard, and we'll, we'll spend like a whole day there. <laughs> he's so entertaining. It'd be great. Yes, I agree. I agree. I agree, All right. too. All right. All, right. All right, Christian. Thanks, brother. Thanks, no Christian. Go ahead. All right, so long. Talk to you soon. Yes. One time I got a call from my cousin who uh, who produces ravioli in the in the great uh, great uh, old country, uh-huh. and uh, he said, "Come on down to the store." And I was like, "Why?" He says, "Don't ask, just come on down." So I was all right. So I get in the car, I drive down there. <laughs> Sometimes when the, you get it put put in that way, you, you go, go and right. do. So I did. I walk in, and sure enough, there's who's standing there, but uh, Uncle Floyd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got to meet him. I got a picture with him. It's floating around the house nice. somewhere. It's me and nice. Uncle Floyd in a, in a nice. ravioli store. And I'm That's like, cool. you can't get any more Italian than that. You know, right. Speaking of uh, this stuff and the parochial stuff, I um, I want to show you something else I did this week. We've been doing a little bit of house cleaning, you know, cleaning closets. And I know you were doing that, too, and saying, the, you know, the stuff yes. you find. So I've been getting rid of a lot of the old clothes. But I most found, of my stuff is on eBay. But oh, yeah. Okay. So I found some stuff, and I actually sent some stuff out to our uh, our good friend Isaac out in, in Arizona. Oh, good. We got a visual. Uh, it's a Motormouth Radio visual here. You remember this? I do. I just washed it. <laughs> I did. I literally Still just has the washed tag. that shirt. This is huh? a Motormouth radio. My wife found these. She had like like six of them stashed. You know. Wow. So I said, all right. You know what? <laughs> I got to send one out to Isaac. And then I, I also, well, because of your, you, you found through your stuff, this was the, remember the inside cling decal for the windows that, that would yes. fade and fall apart. But I still, I still have. <laughs> well, I, right. That's I still tr- have like a, not even a dozen. You know, we had like done these, we had done these oh. decal, these decals here. I remember that bumper and, sticker that, yes. And that, that one went, too. They went nowhere. They went on people's toolboxes in their garages, so they never were right. shown on the cars. Because nobody was going to have the guts of the brains to put it on their car. I yeah, know. That, that was one of our lesser known uh, promotional items. Very rare nowadays. I, I'd, I'd spend a lot of money for that. <laughs> I, I would, too. You know what? I will put that, uh, again, after the show, I'll put up a link on the social media. It's Motor Mouth Radio if you go to X. And Facebook, it's real underscore Motor Mouth Radio on Twitter, on Twitter, not Twitter, on, um, that's the X one, on Instagram, real underscore Motor Mouth Radio. And I, yes. I, every week I put up a couple of pictures to things we spoke about on the show, and this will be among them. And I'll put up a link to that YouTube show where you should go and then subscribe so that, so that, uh, we can see if Brian keeps beating us when he appears. Uh, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> so, so anyway, you know what? We, uh, We've burned a half an hour really quick. Let me get there with the bottom of the hour. We got to take care of a few things. Yes, and I have to go. I have to go and find the uh, the Motormouth Radio Honor Group. Oh, Brian! Brian had a great one last week, and it actually transferred over to Thursday night where we spoke about it because it was so damn good. It was actually thought provoking and inspiring to people. So I liked it, and if I can only remember what it was, but he was I, talking I about if you got a project or projects. Don't just sit and look at them. Do something with them. Do something. You know, move something. Like, dust it all. Do something to at least get you back in touch with it, which will hopefully get that ball rolling to getting it worked on and hopefully uh, finished it someday. And it was great inspiration words. Brian said it much better than I did, but... So I will tell you that the WHPC weather forecast is powered by Pantano's Gourmet with locations in Ule- and Uniondale. And today, eh, it's a crappy day. It's a lot better than the day you're having up in the uh, frozen north, I'm sure. No, I got snow. That's what I mean. Yeah. We, um, we're we like, uh, the temperature's not bad. We're like in the, I think it's in the 40s. We had rain. Rain last night. Rain today. It'll rain all day. I think it's going to rain into, you know, scattered rain into the evening. And, uh, you know, it's going to be colder tomorrow. So I guess at night, 
the temperature will be going down. So luckily we'll be getting out of that. And then uh, uh, sunny tomorrow, I hear, so that's good. So Friday's at midnight also. Again, all the reads I got to do are, are pre, it's like two days, a day or two before our show. So remember for next Friday to listen to <laughs> It's Saucy. And no, I'm not talking about the lasagna I made with the with the giant pot of sauce and, and meatballs and sausage on the stuff. I'm not talking about that saucy. Right. This is a show where DJ Steph transcends the new era of hip-hop and reggae with flavor and variety. That's the good saucy part every week. So Friday's at, at midnight. So, okay. So do you have for us an honor group of the yes. year? First, first one of the year. This, is, miracles. this one well, has to be good. Well, it's it's kind of close to uh, to Brian's because no. Brian's was very good. The Motormouth Radio on the group of the hour, drivers whose New Year's resolutions involve their vehicles. Now, I'm not talking about those individuals that say they're going to keep their Toyota Camry running another year. You know, what's the challenge in that? Now, I mean a resolution to go learn a new skill like ride on two wheels or learn how to weld or actually do body work correctly and not just with a half a can of Bondo like I do. <laughs> do some vehicular photography. Take the fleet to a nice setting. And get some glamour shots. Sell those leftover leftover stuff from finished projects the, that you no longer uh, have the vehicles for. Get all that junk out of the house, Ray. Yeah, I know. I know. Make it a point to attend more vehicular social events, car shows, cruise nights. You never know. You may bump into Ray. You might. <laughs> You may bump into Ray Guarino from Motormouth Radio. You can get a picture taken with him. Hey. Just remember to be realistic. Don't just ignore the maintenance until it needs repairs or resolve to not wash the car as often as it needs or even resolve to keep turning up the radio to cover any alarming noises. I make those resolutions every year. I can't keep those either. Yeah. So if your New Year's resolution involves something that has to do with your vehicle, then you are part of the Motormouth Radio on a group of the hour this week. There you go. That is good. And that's that's what everybody, uh, all of us need to do that because uh, it's tough sometimes to keep that stuff going. But um, yeah. all right. So let me see if I have the, if I've mastered this CD player. Sometimes you want to increment to find a spot, you know, songs with the, like these Pink Floyd songs with the long lead ins. You want to get to the mid. So let me see if, if my 25 seconds is 25 seconds or if it was like 23 parsecs. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. And we'll be back with more Motormouth Radio with your hosts, Ray Guarino and Chris Switzer, uh, right here on 90.3 WHPC. Keep it where you got it. A little sad note, uh, I walked in a little early today and the chef was in the back crying. And I says, Joe, what's up? What? Why so glum? He said he baked a pie and uh, his little dog came over and ate the pie. I says, oh, don't worry, I'll get you another dog. <laughs> Just joking, just joking. Just joking. All right, let's do the choruses. I have a sad story to tell you. It may hurt your ears just a bit. Last night as I walked in my bathroom, I stepped in a big pile of shaving cream. Be nice and clean, shave every day and you'll always be clean. This is Motormouth Radio, your one-hour automotive talk show. And now, here are your Motormouths, Chris Switzer and Ray Guarino. This show on 90.3 WHPC is brought to you by Car Star Celebrity Chase Collision, with two locations in Limbrook and Oceanside who remind you that New York State law says you always have the right to choose which shop will fix your car. Car Star Celebrity Chase Collision offers a full range of services 24 hour towing between Montauk and Manhattan, shuttle service, and they can help you with a rental car arrangement if needed. All repairs include the Car Star Lifetime Nationwide Warranty, ensuring that the experts at Celebrity Chase Collision are always on your side. Y si, hablamos español. More information is available at 516-593-0920 or online at CelebrityChaseCollision.com. You're listening to the Motor Mouth. Hey, Ray and Chris. Did you guys read my mind? Okay, I appreciate you having me on. Wow, you guys finally figured it out. Motor Mouth. This is great. No more foolishness. I miss my puzzles. You're a funny guy. I've been waiting for Sunday just to ask you guys this question. Our trained staff of two will help. Well, good afternoon, guys. I need a little advice. All right, so you got me to call it. All right. I don't know everything. You know, you guys are mechanics. You guys have a great show. Thank you very much. I come with a tale of 
of woe and a warning for the younger guys. Chris is doing jumping jacks. He's getting ready. Ray is right behind me. Every time I get off the air, I think, vote him out. Oh, boy, they're never going to ask me back after that one. <laughs> yeah, this is a collect call. How are you? Quite frankly, there are better things to do with your time. <laughs> oh, I, I, I probably called the wrong number. I was trying to get a hold of Ray. And I wake up screaming. So I'm very happy to listen to your good advice. Yeah, I want to know what the <laughs> is wrong with my car. You know, break it down for us, call guys. All right, uh, see you next weekend. Vote him out. I know you guys usually speak Guido, right. and now you're talking Tinsel and Yiddish, and this morning I happened to listen to the rabbi on ah. your station. So it's all, you know, I guess today's Yiddish then. Right. There are answers, sometimes correct ones, and we may have them. Word of Mouth Radio, 90.3 FM, WHBC. Motor mouth. Hey you, get over here. Every Sunday, 12 to 1, you are going to tune in to hear the Motor Mouths, my friends Ray Guarino and Chris Switzer. 90.3 FM, WHPC. You might learn something. Be nice and clean. Shave every day and you'll always be clean. Yes, shave every day. You'll always be clean. And don't step in it, Chris, because I see you over when there right now. I was in you want more? In the army. This is just so One good. day Look. I looked into my kit. I thought I would find me a sandwich. No, but, but the darn thing was loaded with shaving cream. Be nice and clean. Shave every day and you'll always be clean. All right. It looks like we have a long distance call on the horn here. Oh. Let's go to the phones and fun. Say hi, caller. You're on with the motor mouths. Hey, Ray. Hey, Chris. It's Isaac in Arizona. Coach Isaac. It's Coach Isaac. How are hey, you? Hey, what's up, Coach? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you guys this morning? Well, this afternoon well. for you, morning for me. Yes, yes. We're doing well. Yeah, of course. We're, we're here, so we're, we're able to be up and do the show, and I, I always thank uh, thank uh, the higher powers that be that I'm able to do that because it beats the alternative. So, yes, very good. Definitely. What do you I, do? I, I, I Caught on there, you gave the plug to you that you uh, had sent that shirt out and those stickers out to me. I really appreciate it. Um, it really made my day. That's I, I can't wait. This next week at Cars and Coffee, I'm going to wear the, my Motor Mouth shirt so people can ask me about you guys. <laughs> Just, you know, Coach, uh, I, I will say this. You're the perfect person to do that because you're in good shape and you can duck real fast. So... <laughs> You know, when you when the stuff starts coming at you, just get out of the way. <laughs> you might be shaving cream. <laughs> I think clean. Who knows? All right. Yeah. All joking. Get a yeah. picture, Coach. Get a picture of you wearing the shirt. Yes, send us a picture and I'll post it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Very good. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, they're very rare commodities nowadays. That's that's for sure. And they, and literally, I found one in the bottom of my drawer. And I looked at it and went, this thing needs to be washed. Yeah. I don't think I ever wore it. I know. I got, these are brand new. They still have the yellow sticker on it. A couple of them are like dirty from dust in the closet. I said, they, they've never been used. They're brand new. They're new old stock is what they new are. New old stock. I think it was around exactly. 2009 that one was made, probably. Yeah. So yeah. We had done them every year for a while. We had uh, some sponsors that were you know, uh, uh, funding us to do that. We've since we haven't done that in a while, so right, yeah, very good, cool. So We're looking for sponsors, oh, yeah, I'm though. Ex- <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. Uh, if you guys do make more, definitely keep me in the loop because I'll have to get something that I can use to work on the car with. I won't use that one. That one's too pretty. You know, on our old site, we had a page that was people working in the Motormouth Radio T-shirt. I still have those pictures at home, and you know, it was like, and I think Drew Parisi. Uh, Dean Priestley's husband, he got the dirtiest. He worked on yes. that pro mod, yeah. But we got a picture of Glenn. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of them that we had up there of, of people working in the Motor Mouse shirt, yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. We'll keep you in the loop, uh, Coach. Don't don't worry about that. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I'll need one so I can wear uh, an extra one so I can wear it while I'm working on the Chevelle. Right. I think this year after, after Brian's uh, honor group of the hour got me motivated, um, as you guys mentioned last week, I'm going to need to pull out the Chevelle, start working on it, and get the porch moving so I can get it moved and right. get the Chevelle in the carport. 
You know, that's the thing. It's all about getting, finding the space, getting the space, allocating it, and then having the time to get out there and, and do what needs to be done. And, and some projects are really, really intense. You know, I know like on the ship, those cars, you, you're going to do a lot of, um, you know, a lot of work. They're not going to be quick weekend projects. So they become right. protracted projects. So it's, yeah, it can, it can be quite labor intensive. Yeah. And yeah, coach, oh, yeah. I've I've always learned to do a little bit, just a little bit. If you have an hour to kill, go out there and do it. And what I love about that is it just motivates you to get more stuff done. So I, I'm a firm believer of of what Brian said for the uh, honor group. Definitely, definitely. Oh, right. just oh exactly. Done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to the uh, cars and coffee yesterday. There was a Porsche 914. That's what I have. There was a Porsche 914 out there, and there was a blue 72 Chevelle. Both got my ah. attention and just 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 dug at me. There you go. Yeah, the cars <laughs> you have. I know. When it seems like uh, the same thing would happen to me. Anybody who has a car who isn't that isn't done or hasn't been started, you go to those shows, and of course, that's all you see is the car you have sitting there languishing at home, and you say, "Ah, oh, God, you know, will I ever get to this position?" So yeah, we've we've all been there. But um, well, listen, here, here's to. Uh, you know, resolve and, and getting things done in the new year, and hopefully you can, um, you know, get out there and, and get some uh, some forward progress. We're behind you. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Well, thank you, guys. I'll let you go so you can continue the show. You guys have a wonderful day, and then bundle up. It's I checked the weather out there, and it's cold out there. Eh, it's not that bad. <laughs> not that bad. Now, if you came here, it would be bad. You know, no, I mean, I'm... It ain't that bad, but yeah, you, it, it's a good warning anyway. In case, because if you ever get stuck, you want to have, uh, you want to be warm. So, uh, thanks, right. Isaac. We'll we'll talk to you again on Thursday night. All right, take care, guys. All right, so long. Good hearing from you, Isaac. Thanks. Yes, good old coach. You can hear Coach Isaac. He's on plane to traffic with us every week, and yes. uh, comes in, and his mom watches the show. You know, so he holds up signs sometimes. Hi, mom. I'm like, why don't you just say hi, mom? She's looking at you. <laughs> I don't know. So. <laughs> Let's talk about, you want to talk about some car stuff, some a little more down and dirty, real car stuff? I was going to say, we only got about another 20 minutes left in the show. I know, I know. Well, one of the things I've been doing lately, of, you know, I do a lot of brake work, and I was working on Mike's Avalanche, and now the vehicles that are in the you know, late 90s, early 2000s with the ABS, early ABS systems are coming up, and they're having faults and codes and all sorts of problems. So, I uh, well, there's also all sorts of faults and codes and problems when you can't just uh, finish your thoughts. So let me, uh, let's, we're going to go to the phones. Let's go to the phones and oh. say hi. You're on the motor mouths. Hey, guys. How you doing? Happy New Year. It's Cliff. Cliff, what's happening? Hey, yeah, what's up, brother? Good, love? Good, good. Happy New Year, fellas. Yes, uh, thank you, Cliff. I had a quick question for you guys, and I, I, because I, I, I want to know, have you, and maybe you've spoken about us on a on an episode that I might have missed. Um, have you guys ever had any experience with any of this uh, stuff called fluid film or they call it like a body cavity wax for the chassis at all. I, um, you, and your thoughts on that only because, um, I, I bought an, an old Oh nine, uh, Hyundai Santa Fe for my daughter. And, um, it has a recall from Hyundai for some, uh, underbody, uh, corrosion where you actually bring it to the dealer and they talk about, uh, putting some kind of uh, cavity wax into the, uh, I guess those like unibody kind of frame rails. Which, um, believe it or not, I, I missed a spot that actually does have some corrosion underneath. And um, but then I've been reading a lot about this fluid film stuff that people are spraying on the cars, and it's like uh, some kind of lanol and wool in in the uh, in the thing. And uh, yes. I just want to know if you guys have used it or any experience with it. I tell you what, I haven't. I, I was I was hoping that we would uh, we would we would have been at lunch talking about this over a, a table this week, but you couldn't make it. So we, I, know, I know we're, we're going to try and do it. We're going to try and do it next week. I haven't used it, but I've watched a bunch of videos and read a bunch of stuff. And there's a guy, I'll see if I can find this video and send it to you because he did, he's a YouTuber who does stuff like that, cleaning products and, and things. And then he does a follow-up like, you know, how long did this stuff last or, you know, and, and he, I know he did one recently on fluid film and cavity wax. And uh, I think Project Farm also did something on the best one to use. Uh, oh, but, wow, okay. But I'll look into it and see, and I'll, I'll send you that video. I, yeah. I think at I first glance it's a good thing because it does get into the chassis and it kind of encaps. It's like a poor 15, but mm -hmm. in a different yeah. form. It encapsulates the, uh, the rust. Yeah, it keeps have, the oxygen away. I have an appointment to bring it in uh, 
it's actually a recall. It's an old recall, and uh, it was interesting. And I'm going to bring it to the dealer in about two weeks. Uh, but um, yeah, it, it was interesting stuff. And and uh, funny, Cliff, just to let car- you know, just to let you know, Cliff, that uh, John just texted texted us at two zero three six seven zero four one two seven. Said fluid film is giving his big fat uh, thumbs up here. So just to let oh, you know, give you nice. the uh, news flash from okay. John. He says it's the it's the top. So. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I, now, we'll John, talk about it, yeah. I wonder which John that is. <laughs> and it's funny, I see I see some on the internet that it's like clear, and some is actually like a black colored one, but it's not listed as like a paint, so I guess maybe it just sprays on black and stays kind of wet looking, you know, so. Right, right. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm probably going to have yeah. to do this car maybe even after they do it, you know. Right, so. right. But, my, um, my concern is whatever debris is in there, in that channel, is going to get sprayed over. Well, you get in there. Yeah. You know, I know they sell long. It's tubes and rods to get in, and so you could go in with air first and blow out whatever is loose. Mm, you know, yeah. or just drive through Brooklyn. Whatever's going to, it'll bounce out of the hole. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It was funny because when I looked at this car, you know, it was. Uh, uh, I didn't. I, I kind of stuck my hand under the car. No leaks. Outer rails look great. I didn't get all the way all the way under it, and there's a spot on the inner rail. The rest of the car was like a mint. You know, not you know, meant for a 2009 car. You know, as best as you can be, well kept. It was every, good. You know, so, but missed this spot underneath. But um, maybe this will help slow it down. You know, right, and, uh, right. But uh, all right, fellas, uh, it's a great show as usual. Thanks, and, Cliff. Uh, all I always right. look forward to it on Sundays. Yeah, we may be. Uh, hopefully, we'll be sitting across the table soon and uh, I hope so. Shooting the yep. breeze. Okay. Sounds good. All right, Cliff, thanks. Take care, guys. Happy New Year, both of you. Thanks. Bye-bye. So long. Happy New Year. Thanks. All Bye-bye. right, and you know what? We're going to go right back because we have another caller. Yes, caller, you're on the motor mouths. Hello, Ray. Hello, Chris. Uh, happy, healthy John. New Year to you and uh, the rest of the uh, listening audience at Motor Mouth Radio. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. And that was me uh, texting you about fluid yeah. film. I have a buddy of mine that swears by it, and... I haven't used it personally, but I've seen some of the stuff he sprays it on. And like you said, right, it encapsulates, oh, my God, you, you, you don't even need to clean the undercarriage of the car. It, you just spray it over it. The only caveat is it requires an annual, you know, reapplication. I guess probably not so much for, you know, the inside of the structural parts of the car because, they're not as susceptible to uh, water spray and what have you. Um, the, the only thing I don't like about it, if you got a show car, every piece of dust leaf uh, sticks to it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So well, that's, yeah, that's no good. I, you know, it's funny because I did my own version yesterday. I took my FJ into the shop just to do some PM. I want to do an oil change. And when I do the oil, I always do a tire rotation. And then I do a brake bleed, which was going to be the, the topic I was going to talk about was the ABS brake bleeds. Um, and on that truck, I do have some rust underneath. And I started spraying the chassis just with black paint, you know, over some of the lighter rust. And I noticed this, that where the, the chassis stayed black, but where, there's a lot of welds because there's a lot of gussets. It's a truck chassis. The welds always rust first before the, 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 the metal does. So... Uh, yeah, just just to throw it out there. That's you know, I'm I'm trying to do a little bit, you know, to try and help prolong it. So yeah, for an everyday driver, um, you know, yeah, you're on the roads with the salt, the brine up here. Um, yeah, it, it definitely, and, and I've seen it go over rust, and it's amazing, you know, the finished product, and you don't have to do anything; you just spray it over, and it encapsulates right. it. Right. See, the thing, the other problem that I've seen is I've worked on people's cars who have had stuff like that done. Um, yeah, Christian's talking about Z-Bar. Uh, 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 Billy, uh, Billy G is talking about uh, Tough Coat Dynell from the 70s. I remember Rusty Jones. Those were all... Remember Extend? They were, yeah, was, all kind. But the problem yeah. is I've worked on people's cars, even who have done, like, extensive undercoating. Now you got to take a bracket off. Or take a bolt off. There's no head anymore. It's it's undercoated. So you gotta chisel it or pound your socket on it uh, to get it off, and then pound the socket, you know, the bolt out. It, it can yeah. be it can cause problems for maintenance down the road, which you know you really don't think of. You're just thinking of prolonging the life. But right. And I always think about the humidity that gets behind it once it's applied. 
Yeah. Sometimes it, humidity will get you know, behind it. Now really it encapsulates it within um, that in the middle. You know, my friend that has done this in numerous cars, his own included, um, bought, they have a kit where you can go in through uh, all the, you know, in a structure, uh, tubular stuff, and it's got like a spray head on it. And you, you know, you hook it to a compressor, and it just fans out, and you right. push it as far back and drag it through. Right. Right, um, but it, it does seem to encapsulate the rust. I was impressed, uh, you know, back in the late fall, he did uh, somebody's car, and I went, "Wow, <clears throat> you know, it impressed me." I wouldn't throw it under a show car, but uh, no. Well, like I said, yeah. I've used Pour Fifteen back in the day on stuff, and it did the same thing. It was a rust encapsulator, and right. it did work. It did work. It did turn into the hardest surface on earth. So if you did need to do something later, then if you did go over a bolt or a screw, forget about it. You yeah, know. that's the part I like about the uh, fluid film. It, um, you know, is, is fairly easy to get off if you're doing service on the uh, vehicle. Um, and it, it's also, I think, all natural products. I, I, yeah. I think the uh, base ingredient in it is lanolin. Right, right. Yes, John. They've come, you know what? They've come a long way through science, and people have researched it and found that there was a, you know, a, um, a good cause and a reason to do this. So they did put money into the research, and now they have much better products. I, I would agree with that 100%. Yeah, because what's that stuff, um, NOH, or um, that's oil-based, though. Okay, okay. You know, the, the lanolin is sort of sacrificial. If you hit it hard enough with a hose, you know, in hot water, it probably... Well, uh, lanolin, soap, you know? I mean, I, I was yeah. that's, that's in soap. I think it was in Prell or one of the detergents they used to... It was a dish detergent commercial we used to see all the time as kids. Like, oh, it's got lanolin in it, you know? Yeah. Okay. Uh, trust me, your hands will be as smooth as... Uh, yeah. Exactly. You, won't, you won't need the crack cream. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. Hey, I'll sign up because that's one of my problems, though. <laughs> All righty, John. Anyhow, guys, looking forward to uh, another uh, year of uh, Motor Mouth Radio. Yep. And uh, talk to you soon. We'll do a job. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Bye-bye. John. All Actually, right. uh, Brian texted saying uh, said many moons ago when he was at, uh, at the Porsche dealer, mm-hmm. said he had some stuff. Uh, that he uh, that was worth. So it was it was very good stuff. He did not mention what it was though. Roast so off. There is. <laughs> yes, I have a can of it. It's roast off. R O S T dash off. And what it's it's not. That's it's actually the the German version of uh, penetrant. It's like rust off. It. Oh. The stuff works great. Really, rust off. Yeah. Is it is it as good as your your Zim's crack cream? Well, totally different applications. You know, applicant <laughs> uses. This is for rust and and not cracks of a different to, kind. Yeah, kind of. So <laughs> that's for. So. He also said the Chesapeake house is forty five minutes from oh, his house. So exactly. So, so I, could I don't not have, have gotten there. I I don't have enough time to get into the ins and outs of this break thing, but I just want. I will mention one part of the story that I wanted to hit on. That yeah. You know, people in general don't ever pay attention to have brake fluid flushed or changed in the car, and we've preached that for many years. Yes. And I'll, I'll, I remember back to like in the seventies when I started driving. I don't. I didn't do. I. I, I mean, I changed drum brakes and row and drums all the time, but I. Ne- I don't remember ever bleeding brakes and never changing a master cylinder, and that stuff just what? went on for. Wow. Yeah. You know, it just wasn't in my. My lexicon or my Ballywick at the time, I never did. Now I do it like almost every week. Um, well, the, yeah, the, the only time, I, I mean, yes, uh, uh, recycling and, and changing brake fluid, uh, I, I was a disciple of because of the show. Because I, I never changed the brake fluid. The only time I changed the brake fluid is if I popped a, a, a wheel cylinder. Then yeah. the brake fluid got changed. Sure. Well, that was really it. So I want to say people should, like for this year, you want to make a resolution, bring your car into your favorite shop or dealership or wherever you go and, and ask them to do a brake fluid flush. Now yeah. these cars that are in the late 90s and early 2000s that have ABS, like Mike's truck, are having problems with the ABS pumps and accumulators and blocks, and and there's a lot of rust happening. And it can, I believe it can be prevented with regular flushes to keep the, the the moisture out but you need to do what's called a computer bleed in in many cases now you don't need to do that as maintenance like i did my fj yesterday and i did a regular wheel bleed with my um mighty vac tool because right. i didn't have any air in the system and i'll tell you something right. today, my brake pedal does feel better maybe just by changing the fluid but 
if you do change a component, a wheel component, or there's air in the system for whatever reason, you need to do a computer bleed on those on those vehicles. And it's through a scan tool. It's not a hard thing. The scan tool does have to work for you. You just have really? to follow the prompts. So I'm going to say this at, at first at first uh, you know first base here. Have your fluid changed? And and you know the intervals. There's argument over the intervals. Um, every three years, every four years, maybe I'd say at least. You know that's the furthest I'd go. I do mine. I agree. You know I, when I have a car in the driveway and I know it's been a little while and the hood's up, I'm doing something else, an oil change or whatever I'm doing. I'll just pop the master cylinder cap, suck out that fluid, and you can tell by the color it gets darker as it gets older. Yes, because it's the rubber from the hoses that are getting that's getting deposited in the fluid, and there's also mm. copper. There's a lot of trace metals that are in that fluid. So if you suck that reservoir dry with a turkey baster and fill it right. with fresh fluid, you've now just changed. We don't know what the real percentage is. I guess at it, I'm going to say anywhere between seventy and eighty five percent of the fluid is held in that reservoir. And it's amazing how it circulates through the system. It does. It goes back and forth. So, yeah. uh, but but the bleed procedure is something we'll talk about more in depth because I want to you know let people know what's entailed and what you should do and and maybe shouldn't do. Uh, but yeah, just do that. If you do that a couple times a year, you know, you buy a quart of brake fluid that'll last you a while. You know, when I bleed sure. brakes, I could go. I could some cars, especially that were a problem or had a lot of new parts. I could have gone through the better part of a gallon of brake fluid on on that on that that redo of the system because it was dry, you know. Uh, yeah, and you have to pump fluid through it yeah. in order to seal the system. Basically, it's got to be filled. Yeah, it's got to uh, be filled, and it's got to be extracted. That fluid is like sacrificial. Right. That first amount of fluid, well, just so you can get the air out with it. I'll, I'll tell you this, like the, the, the dirty floor, of course, you get rid of. But when I get when I'm doing a car and I've done and I know the system is 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 all new or mostly all new and I'm just putting fluid in to get a pedal, the fluid that's coming back out into my container is new. It's it's I can see it's clean. It's the stuff I right. put in. I will put that back in the reservoir. It hasn't been. You will. Yeah, well, it hasn't been in service. It, it's been through the system, you know, and, I, and I'll put that back into the reservoir. To, to me, that's okay. new fluid, you know. I have no problem doing that. No problem whatsoever. See, I won't. I won't do that. That's that's okay. funny. Well, that's, yeah. you know what? So you read that's even better. You know, it, that's yeah, even I, better. I I, I I just toss it because I always feel that it's passing through. It's taking some of the dirt out with it. I think you're putting some of the dirt back into the master cylinder when you when you do what you're doing. I kind of just get rid of it. I use it sacrificially. What I try and do, this may be just as bad, <laughs> what I try and do is sometimes you have old brake fluid that was, the can was open, the bottle was open, but it was capped mm -hmm. and was put aside. Mm -hmm. So you know air has gotten into it. Remember how Bronk used to hate that type yes. of brake fluid? No, it's, that stuff is junk. Now I, I will take that and sacrifice that first. Okay. See, I, I'm that'll, a little more... That'll go to the master. I know that's going to get uh, urinated out. I'm a little more cognizant of it because working in a shop, I have to go tell the guy, hey, look, we need more brake fluid. He'll say, what are you doing using all the brake fluid? So we'll save a little. So listen, with that, we're going to get out of here. We'll be back next week with more Motormouth Radio. Ray Guarino, Chris Switzer. Uh, stay tuned for Kim. Listen to Thunder Road because she's coming up next. Kim, what are we telling people waiting for us? Well, Chris, what are we telling people waiting for us out for me in the bargain lot? Whatever. <laughs> you can ask Kim, too. <laughs> and maybe for Kim, too. Yeah, what, what are we going to tell her? Don't follow us home and take care of your classic car this year. And thank you both for listening. Right. See you next week. 90.3 WHBC. See ya. See you, bye. bye.